It is Wednesday, April 17th. We are now on our third show after the spring game, and I had a little bourbon and football last night, breaking down the, I guess if you want to call it a game, I don't know what the fuck I broke down, but it was the spring game, the Ohio State spring game, and so we got to talk about that a little bit. Um, those of you that are on Patreon and watched it, it's it's posted now. If you haven't, if you weren't there last night, you can go watch it still, you know, after the fact. And it was it was a nice breakdown. Um, kind of when you go from breaking down all 22 film, Chris, to going back to a copy. TV copy, it is you realize how blessed we are that we have access to the all 22 film. Because half the time I can't even tell who the quarterback is. Like I can't even tell. I mean, it's you know, it's blurry now that I downloaded it. I mean, it still was a great watch but it's just remind you how spoiled you are just so spoiled yeah to have all 22 film but anyways it's hump day menace army get your freak on number one chris how's your week going on this fine midpoint good man i was today years old when i learned the dj Khaled's name before dj Khaled was arab attack which he decided to change after 9 11 so oh, i just you know yeah that's probably smart a little fun fact for the day <laughs> i didn't know that until just now i was this age when yeah. i found that out no i was today years old too so you know i'm just like you know i'm a fact guy I like i yeah. like to get the facts I like to learn the facts. So shout out to DJ Khaled. I, I saw a video, Chris, and I wish I should have wrote them all down on uh, today's years old things. Did you know that sand is called sand? It's because it is the mediator between sea and land. Is that real? That's real. Do you also know why Pinterest is called Pinterest? You pin your interest. Pin your interest. Okay. I, I got that yesterday. A little linguistics lesson. There was a, there was several. Is that, is that sea thing real? I, th that's, that's what this TikTok it told may, me. It makes sense. Huh. Yeah, give me some more. What do you got? I don't. I, for, I forget the other ones. I should. I said I should have wrote them down. I actually thought about it when I watched it. Like that'd be a hell of a little funny, yeah. hell of a little funny uh, intro, intro to the show. That's good. But there, there was several of them, and, how, and a couple of them, I was like, damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew. I think I knew the Pinterest one just because I uh, grew up with all girls, so yeah. Pinterest was a was, was your a real, was a real thing. But how how was your day yesterday though? You had a busy day, didn't you? Oh, uh, yesterday was no, not not yesterday was kind of chill. Uh, I thought you had like um, a practice and then bourbon and ball. I did. I had a, so in my world that's not very busy. Mm. Um, did the show, went home, had to get Lily to softball practice. Her softball practice was from six thirty to eight. Here's how much I love the army. I pulled her out because I I coach. I coach on the six-year-old softball team. The softball team's name is Menace to Sports. Full sponsor. Oh. Sponsored the team. Is that the official name? I didn't know. I didn't know that. Well, you know, they're going to make up some girly name yeah. they're, that they're going to call themselves. But their jerseys, logoed up, rebrand. It's going to be sweet. So, anyways, I coach her team. And I had to pull her out at 7.30 because we had bourbon and ball to do today at 8. And I couldn't be late. Yeah, so well, look at you. Then we did bourbon and ball, broke down the spring game, and then just relaxed after that. But today is a fucking – I mean, today we have baseball practice, softball practice, and a softball game. Three of my kids have events today. today so. Today's a barn burner. Another barn burner. Go figure. Oh. Here we are. But – it's been a good week so far. Got to keep it going. Got to keep it, as you say, moving, moving and, and grooving. So we're at we, the halfway point, as you say. The halfway point. Almost home to the weekend. And then you always say, like, stretch and hydrate. Stretch and hydrate. Always stretch and hydrate right. on a Wednesday because it's, it's time to get freaky, Menace mm -hmm. Army. Oh, but we got a lot to discuss. Also, send your super chats. Michigan got hit with some sanctions. We could talk about that with a little bit more knowledge. Yesterday, it dropped in the middle of the show, and we tried our best to piece it together. But on a scale of 1 to 10... Here's what I want to know from the chat. How severe of a punishment was handed out yesterday to Michigan? One to 10, 10 being death penalty. How severe of a punishment was it? Because that's what we really need to discuss. But let's get to it. Lukey, let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. WNBA viewership. Yesterday, I sat here because last year's viewership was 500,000, and the year before that was 400,000. And I asked you, Zach, would they eclipse 750,000? You said they would eclipse a million. I went, I thought I went big. Yeah, you did go big. The WNBA went even bigger because holy shit. 2.5 million people yeah. watched the draft, the WNBA draft. That is what it was like. What five hundred thousand last year? Five so, five seventy two last year. The year before, and five seventy two was a record by over a hundred thousand. Yeah, by one hundred seventy. They had one hundred seventy thousand more last year than they have ever had, and then this year they went from five hundred seventy two thousand to two point five million. Five times the growth. Five hundred percent growth in viewers. The, that, that's the impact of Caitlin Clark. And if I'm telling you what, she needs to monetize and capitalize on her 
name, image, and likeness like a son of a bitch right now. Facts. I mean, that's it, it's massive. Um, it, it blew me away. But looking back, I guess I'm not super surprised. But the only two leagues it trails is the NFL draft that had six million dollars this last year, and then the NBA that had three point seven million this, the year before that. I would assume that the NFL will probably break their record last year. This year, maybe, mate. Yeah, I mean, I think every year it huh. grows. It grows a little bit. I would imagine. Yeah, I guess this year is. Is this year's draft inter- more interesting than last year's draft? I guess I want to ask you as, as like a football junkie. Because last year we had, you know, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. It feels very similar, right? Last year, you knew Bryce Young was going number one overall. I disagreed with it. I mean, as strongly as you could that he was the best quarterback in the draft. Same right. as this year. Caleb Williams is going number one overall. I don't believe he's the top quarterback in the draft. He's not on my board, but who but, am I? And right? I mean, I might be a dumbass, but I was right last year. <laughs> That's all I know. So, I don't know. I, I watch the draft every year, so it's hard for me to even gauge who's going to tune in that didn't before, right? Yeah. Other than just growth, natural growth. Like, I don't see any storylines this year that make you think, oh, everyone's going to watch the draft this year because this drama is going on. Now, I haven't leaked my J.J. McCarthy AI video yet, so when that happens, people might watch. I wonder if not having a Bama or Ohio State QB slated to go in those top 10 picks might, might you know, take a little dent in it not a not a not a major one but last year like, like obviously two of the biggest brands in in football are ohio state and bama and like yeah. having bryce young cj stroud and kind of their relationship going back to their time in high school yeah i mean the storyline storyline was there this year um you know la is cool or whatever i don't think it's a major football market but they're gonna no. get ratings obviously but i don't you know caleb williams doesn't feel like a true usc guy he feels <laughs> more like a mercenary because he came uh, how he came over but i well, mean I the, the, the I michigan think, fan base i think the other thing is because what outdoes college football in numbers? The NFL. NFL, right? right. So I think the other side of it is is what NFL fan bases are tuning in, right? Ooh. Because, like, Ch- Chicago right now, yeah, they already know who they're getting. I think when there's drama with the first pick and then, and then the, the, the second tr- pick and right. the trickle down of that, right, when you don't know, when there's some unknown, all those fan bases are tuning in because it's like, oh, shit, they took Drake May. That means – and they watch the chips fall, right? Mm to see who they're going to get. And so I, I I think that I feel pretty good about the top four and the order they're going to go in. I'm sure those those fans are going to tune in, but maybe not the fringe fans. And so I think it could be just an average viewership without with minimal growth. I don't think it'll do bad numbers, but it'll be minimal growth. Are you going to bet? I'm going to try to nail the top five picks this year. I tried are last you? year and fucked it up. Are you can bet on that. Yeah. So, so yeah, you can go on and you can like, like parlay the top five picks. If Ooh, you want and, shit, and I am up. all the way the fuck in on this. Cool. We'll, we'll sit down um, next week at some point, and I'll just give you everything I know because all I do is consume fucking mock drafts and, and mock right. draft shows. But the, the problem is the more you consume, the less informed you probably Dog, are. That's what happened last year, bro. I felt so good about my top five, but you know who was in it? Will Levis. Oh, Will Levis. Because Will Levis was the favorite to go number two overall pick. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, they got me. Like, I've been, you know, I, I don't agree with it. But I think these NFL teams are going to be fucking idiots because I've seen it before. Yeah, I, right. you, you see it every year, and uh, and they got me. But yeah, no, that that's one of the that's one of the fun ways to bet is putting together a first five. I mean, outside of that, outside of that, shit can go crazy with trades and all that. But like, if you look at a mock draft, so the, for the first five picks, obviously we're going Caleb Williams to the Bears. So this is this is just what the yeah. what's supposed to happen, right? Drake May to Washington. Or are you going Jaden Daniels? See, I'm going Jaden Daniels because Brian Kelly slipped up, and that's the sole reason. Yeah, Jaden Daniels there, so then you're going to go Drake May to the Patriots, right? Uh And then you go Marv to the Cardinals? Yeah. And then the big question mark is Minnesota at five. And that's where it gets a little dicey. But it's fun. It's it's fun to, like, sink your teeth into. Mm. So this mock draft has – this is fucking ridiculous. This is CBS's latest mock draft. They have Caleb Williams one to the Bears, Drake May two to Washington, J.J. McCarthy, three to New England, mm. Marv, four to the Cardinals, and then Jaden Daniels, five to the Vikings. Yeah, no fucking way. Ah. There's no way. Ain't no way. There's there's literally not a chance. But why, why is there not much chatter, or maybe there is? Is there a lot of chatter about the Vikings taking J.J.? Um, there is... There was, but then it sounded like Justin Jefferson maybe wasn't thrilled about that idea. So then it kind of backed off a little bit. But there is there is a little bit of buzz about him going that high. Um, and honestly, I think that 
I think that they're the team that's trying to leak all the stuff about him becoming a top three or top four pick to add their value to that pick is kind of what I've been able so to gather. But tell me this. When you bet it, if you say J.J. McCarthy at five, like what if the Giants trade up to five and pick him? That holds. counts? Yeah, still Okay, holds. so it doesn't. you don't have to get the team right. You don't mm-hmm. have to predict trades. Well, that's good. Yeah, just just Joe. Just, Alton, Joe Alton is the guy that I could see going in the top five. If a team doesn't, let's say the Vikings at five, they don't really want to draft a receiver in like Malik Neighbors yeah. or Roma Dunze. Joe Alt's the wrench, though, man. He he's is the wrench because the I think thing. he's he's a lot like Joe Thomas to me. Like he is a fucking big time, big time, Corner long shot. career mm-hmm. left tackle in the NFL, and that they don't come off it. Like guys like that that are almost can't miss. Almost. Yeah. I mean, Paris last year was. I thought Paris was a, a, a. I think he is a Hall of Fame tackle. And I said that during the draft process. Shit. I said it during his last year, college season. Yeah. And you know, the issue you run into, Zach, when you start to get in all these mock drafts too, this, this late in the cycle, it's people want to release about five mock drafts each and yeah. they all have to be a little bit different. <laughs> so then right. you just shuffle things just to shuffle things rather than shuffling things off information. Because you're trying to generate clicks and like bring something new and like get something clipped on Twitter, all that. So it becomes it becomes tricky. So last year I looked at some of the mock drafts from before and then I fell for one of the one of the late ones um, that had Bill Levis in at number two or whatever. Yeah, I but, mean, it, it, I wasn't surprised by the Bill Levis falling. Obviously, I mean, I I all draft silly yeah. season. I was like, these guys are fucking idiots, but they they convince you like when Vegas believes it, you're like, right. damn, like. And you've seen the NFL do dumb shit before. You're like, I know he shouldn't be, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean he won't be. And that's the problem with betting on the draft. And that's the thing you got to deal with and kind of do mental gymnastics. Because I, I, in no world was Will Levis ever a top five pick in my head. Right. But I also felt the same way about Zach Wilson and Trey Lance. No doubt. And both guys were top five picks. So it, it does it does get a little tricky. It does get a, a little dicey. I want to go back to the WNBA draft just because of how crazy this is. The Indiana Fever gained more Instagram followers this week than they did in the three years prior. April 21st to April 24th. They get, er, 20, wait, April 2021 to April 2024. They gained 60,000 fo- followers. The last seven days, 75,000 followers. That's I'm just I'm just telling you, Caitlin Clark right now has impact that I don't know that we've seen. Maybe, and I'm not saying she's this type of player. I'm not saying anything about her as a player, but the impact she's having, but on the WNBA and more importantly, the Indiana Fever rivals and probably supersedes LeBron James getting drafted out of high school as the the heralded goat. Oh, it the, absolutely does. The heir apparent to Jordan. Him going to Cleveland, I think, on a the magnitude scale is smaller than her going to the Indiana fever. I mean, they doubled their Instagram following like the, their, their revenue is going to at least double. And that's why I think she needs to leverage the fuck out of that and figure out a way, take a loan out from a bank, like buy, buy in, like own part of the fever. Like she is bringing the value. If she owns part of the fever, their, their, their team value is going to go through the roof. She needs to be a businesswoman. Yeah, honestly, you're you're not wrong. It is it is bigger in terms of overall impact than LeBron going to the Cavs because she, it, the WNBA is an unpopular sport. Yeah. It's not popular. The NBA was already established. Exactly. Already had Michael Jordan. Already had like a run of great. Oh, fuck it. Dr. J. Kareem Dr. Abdul Jabbar. Like all those great players. They had, had run through You had Jordan Brand. It was already massive. Yeah. She is taking, she is a megastar in an unpopular arena, making that unpopular arena popular. Right, absolutely. She is the here's 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 the best equivalency I can find. She is Yao Ming to China. Yeah, ooh. Right. Yeah. Yao Ming came to the NBA and all of I mean numbers, you look at the numbers, they went, China went insane the yeah. because China was locked in with their Chinese superstar. That is what she is for Americans. It's just been here the whole time. We just didn't watch it. <laughs> we just didn't watch it. So hopefully we do watch it. And honestly, all the girls in her class should feel blessed at uh, you know yeah. at some capacity because the whole sport has a chance to I mean, the sport's going to blow up this year. It's going to have a record-setting year this yeah. year. So um, that's that's really big time. Here we go. Uh, remember the Jonte Porter story, the guy who yep. would bet his unders and then leave games early with an oh, eye yeah. poke. Oh, yeah. So it turns out it came out that he was using a, <laughs> a VIP FanDuel account in Colorado and was betting millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> he was not playing around. And this is crazy because he knew he's not good enough to stick in the league a long time. He really was in the league because – he got a look because of his brother, who was is one of the you know better players over there in Denver and NBA champion. And now he here he is. He's like, you know what? Let me bet millions and millions of dollars. 
make my bread and get the fuck out of there. But he got caught. Dog, millions of dollars on unders. But my favorite part of this from front, front office sports is they said Porter could be banned from the NBA if found guilty. Like, could be? Could be. He is going to be more, so banned. Like, whatever the most banned you could be, he will be that. Like, Pete Rose on steroids. Yeah, honestly. And it's funny because, like, him and his brother are just in totally different worlds. I don't know if you know his brother is Michael Porter Jr. He's like a vegan now. He, you know, does does a lot of does a lot of talking about, you know, kind of mental health and all that. Um, you know, good good dude. He actually has a podcast. He talks about mental health and like his relationship with God. And he had a former porn star on there for his last episode. Really threw me. <laughs> he, had, he had Lana Rhodes on there, and she talked about like being sexualized. And his reply was, "Oh, that's tough." <laughs> <laughs> like he was trying to come up with the words, but just like, just like very different. Like one's doing like the, you know, the feel good podcast. The other one is over here robbing Vegas, robbing Vegas. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's just a wild story, but mm. he was in his bag, deep in his bag. He was like, man, I thought I'd be a great player in the NBA. I'm just mid. I'm not going to get the amount of money I want to get. So let me find another way. He's yeah. a hustler, baby. He's he's a fucking hustler, baby. The funniest shit was him banking in a three and not celebrating it. Because <laughs> he knew, fuck, I just hit the over. The over was, was 0.5 for three-pointers made this game. Well, what? hey, think about it now. You talk about a, a seesaw, like teetering, like a fine line. Like he had to be good enough to yeah. remain on NBA teams, but bad enough to hit the unders. Right. <laughs> like that's. That's a fine line. Well, and he was only hitting the unders like what, like once a month. So it's like he would like wait, be like, all right, cool. I just scored 16, 13, 11. Like I'm I'm scoring a good amount. Now I'll bet the under yeah, now that he, it's up a little bit. He played and we're talking about motivation. Mm -hmm. He played his balls off yeah. to get that number to keep inflating. And then once he got to where he was like, oh, that's gonna be tough to do. I'm tanking. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He's like, oh shit, 18? <laughs> I don't know if I can get 18. I'll go the under and get a pokey eye. Yeah, he, he poked himself in the eye. Bro. <laughs> How, I, dude, if there's a video of him, like, when he, he thinks no one's looking, just going like that just, and poking his eye, I will fucking just will one, be rolling on the ground laughing. One in the good old eye hole. How about this dog from uh, the state of Ohio? John Diebler was set to be hired, or at least Jake Diebler wanted to hire him to be a, uh, a coach on the team, and obviously – well, he, he was, you know, in basketball before, a Buckeye legend, and they said no. Ohio Neptunes and Laws do not, would not let Diebler bring his brother onto uh, onto the Ohio State staff. That's just, I mean, it must, he certainly could hire him, maybe not as an assistant coach, but it's fucked up. Like, th there should be some some kind of loophole for for resume, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I totally understand the, the Kirk Ferentz hiring Brian Ferentz, and that was really okay because he had a resume, right? He was at the Patriots. Like, he was a coach. So, he he hired him. But then, like, his performance was so awful that he should have been fired. And it's it, I get it. It's a tough world because who wouldn't want to hire their brother and help them out, help them start their career? But then the same thing, what? Because he popped out of the same vagina? Like, Luke Fickle hired Mike Vrabel with zero coaching experience because they were brothers right they yeah. teammates best friends they were essentially brothers now should he not have been allowed to well of course he should have especially with hindsight like great hire but why can he hire mike vrabel with no experience but because john and jake popped out of the same cooter they can't hire him yeah i guess he can't be brought back in any capacity with the basketball team so he right now is at butler doing a uh, player personnel for their basketball team like what is that and uh you know you know john Diebler, all-time leader in threes at ohio state jake wants to bring him over and i guess you know he can't be brought back because it's a public school um it can't be so could at jim all. harbaugh not hire john harbaugh well i don't know what the michigan rules are if he was still in michigan i mean uh like, well he did hire him didn't he or no or he, wait, he no. hired but he hired like nephews he, and he his own son a. harbaugh yeah Huh. Yeah. It, Just say like, oh, why is Ohio so fucked up? I don't know, but it's it's a fourth degree felony in Ohio if they would have went Dude, through why, and hired us. What, what is wrong with our fucking state? I feel like we're the most ass backwards state in the world. I mean, yeah. outside of maybe like West Virginia. Like, what is wrong with us? From the OHSA, like across the board, it took us forever to legalize gambling and weed and everything else. Like, what the fuck is wrong with Ohio? I, I, I just, I'm. And, Mind blown. And I guess it's a fourth degree felony because it's a public contract. You can't hire somebody in. So that because is, uh, he came out of the same vagina. Yeah. That's he, the reason. Mm -hmm. Even now, though he's qualified for 
Like, what about lifelong best friends? Like, grew up together since you were three. Up, uh, not the same vagina juice when they came out, so mm-hmm. allowed to hire them. It's just the dumbest thing in the world. It's really unfortunate because it's like now, like, the all-time leader in three-pointers cannot He's work. banned. Right. He's banned work from Ohio, Ohio State. State. Because his brother got hired. Right. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, one of them. I've heard some dumb shit. Yeah, definitely, definitely really dumb and really surprising. And it, it makes me wonder, like, at what point does this start? Does like like was it illegal for Ryan for uh for Urban Meyer if he would have wanted to hire Corey Dennis? Uh no, they're not that, they're they're not blood relatives. Because that's pretty close to ne- like I mean, I kind of is nepotism, but he 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 but he and to be fair, like, he he hired Corey before he was married to Nikki. Mm. So that's just a random guy to the state of Ohio. So what happens if you then marry into the family? Because the wording is including a public job for members of their family. Therefore, public officials and employees are prohibited from using their public position to directly hire or secure the hire of a family member. Damn. What What? better yet, Chris? What if Ryan Day takes a paternity test, come to find out he's Chip Kelly's kid? Does he have to fire him immediately? Hey, that's crazy. Doc. I'm just saying. Hey. Or can he get charged with a fourth degree felony after he finds out? Like, oh, if you keep him employed, you're going to prison. Hey, that's like, this is the most dumb shit I've ever heard. Lock Ryan Day up. Like, I need a paternity test to make sure he's not Chip Kelly's kid. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, this is fucking nepotism. Honestly, <laughs> that's what John and Jake should do. Should fake a paternity test. Yeah, hell yeah. Not brothers anymore. Hell yeah. Not brothers. <laughs> Brother. brother well i guess they actually have to be brothers half brothers at least i would think so <laughs> you, you can't you can't double up it uh, could have been switched at birth you never know yeah absolutely wild um let's get a quick work from our partner i'm a little bit over let's do it we'll be right back after this menace army i've told you a, a hundred times already the best sheets i've ever owned ever used they're sexy they're comfortable and the best part is they're temperature controlling self-cooling these are miracle made sheets did you know that the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep sleep quality if you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets inspired by NASA. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. They're self cleaning, comfort and quality are through the roof. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. All you have to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace, trymiracle.com slash menace. To try Miracle Made Sheets today and whatever you're buying from them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code MENACE at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash menace and use code MENACE to claim, to claim your free three towel piece set and save over 40% off. Trymiracle.com slash menace. Treat yourself, Menace Army. I'm not a math guy, but if it's already 40% off and then another 20% off, that's that's a decent amount off. Yeah, that's that's a lot of percents off. Yeah, once you take the 40 off, the 20 is not exactly – it's just – it's a lot off. Um, on the college football video game side, more than 12,000 athletes have opted into EA College Football 25. They have to the end of April to opt in. So if you've not opted in, go do it. Right? I mean, I don't know what we're waiting on. So yeah. you, you said 12,300? Yeah. So that that it, what there's 131 uh, schools and 85 athletes. So there's only 11,135 scholarship athletes. Oh, you know, my guy Mason Mags running back. Yeah, we got, year. Some, we got some walk-ons yeah. opting in. I want to see who's opting out other than Arch Manning. We know he opted out for Arch. some fucking reason. Is that his full name or is it Archibald? Archibald, I bet. Okay, Archibald. Great name. Great guy. Great guy. Um, call him Bald. Bald. <laughs> bald Manning. Bald Manning. <laughs> That's a terrible name. We're going with it. Bald uh, Manning. Roll with it, Mr. Bald Manning himself. I just threw this in here because you went on Twitter about it yesterday. Trevor Bauer still not pitching in the MLB. It looks like I don't understand. His, yeah. I, I just don't understand it. And and listen, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying he's an innocent guy, a good guy. I have no idea. Chris told me some story. Now, granted, this was some chick that slid in his accuser's DMs, told a story about her friend. So we're talking fourth hand information at this point that he like throat fucked a girl with a dildo and ruptured her esophagus. I didn't, I didn't think you were going to say that when we did this segment. I if he we did, gonna... he's obviously a dark human being like a fucking he is. I mean, sadistic. But moral story is we don't know. I know one of his accusers just got indicted by a federal jury in Arizona for fraud, for making it all up. And, and she's facing a felony. I know the other accuser, prosecutors and, 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 and detectives and everyone went through everything. 
and couldn't find one thing that he did wrong. So I'm of the belief of innocent until proven guilty. And nobody can prove shit on this guy. So why is he blackballed? Yeah. Why is he not allowed to play in the major leagues? I don't understand. Because do the major league teams have more information than prosecutors? than district? Or I'm sorry, district attorneys and, and investigators? Like, why is he blackballed? I don't understand it. Also, I, you know, I, it feels like they think it'll be a PR nightmare if he comes back to the MLB. But to me, it's it's almost more what? of a nightmare keeping him out. Keeping him out I mean, right? and, and maybe, people, people will say he's not good enough anymore, but you don't know that. He's offered to take yeah. a league minimum deal. He's definitely good enough to get paid league minimum. He can play in a minor league. Go to the minors different. and see if he's still got it. Like, I, I just, I can't stand when we crucify someone based on hearsay. And that's all we have. We have p- people saying he did things. There's not, in, in, in this day and age, how's there not any technology? I heard the one thing, oh, he, he told one girl he was going to fuck her unconscious. I'm like, sounds like an overconfident guy. <laughs> like, oh, like, I'm, I'm going to make you squirt everywhere. And like, three seconds later, he comes and says, I'm, I'm tired. And like, it didn't happen. <laughs> Just sounds like a guy that's trying to be, like, big, bad fucker. Like, I, I is there any evidence? Yeah. And if there's not, we're just, this is the Me Too movement. Like, oh, well, this girl said that, so he's out. That is a dangerous, dangerous thing to to allow. Should being a deviant disqualify you from the MLP? <laughs> I'm I mean, sorry. I'm sorry, bro. It's just a joke. Bro. Not listen. It, listen, <laughs> Justine and I do some deviant shit, oh. but it's consensual. We do it together. Mm-hmm. Like, we both enjoy it. Like, I got, what you, what are you doing? The bedroom's between you and her. And if it's not between you and her and she doesn't consent, major fucking problem. What, what what does Mace say? Stop telling people it doesn't matter because it matters. Clearly it does. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna crucify a guy for what he does in the bedroom without any knowledge that anything he's done is actually wrong. Do you think Trevor Bauer will ever play in the league? I yet? don't know. I mean, yeah. well, mainly because as time ticks on, like he's not he's not he can't anymore, yeah. right? It, it becomes like like you're so far away from it. It's like it's like the call Colin Kaepernick stuff. Not yeah. to compare them, but it's like you're out of the league for so long, we can't bring you back in. It'll be more of a distraction. Well, and, and, we don't and you're not play. good anymore. Yeah, you're not like good. at this point, Colin Kaepernick. If he played the whole time in the NFL, would already be out of the NFL. Mm-hmm. So what is it? No one's blackballing Colin Kaepernick anymore. He just can't do it anymore. Now they did for a while, just like they did with Trevor Bauer. And at some point, and it might be now, he just can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just it's. It's criminal. And shout out to Arizona for slapping that bitch with charges. Charges, big charges. charges I got a I got a real problem with women that use their vagina to crucify men. Like get their ruin men's lives. I have a real problem with those people. Um, word we got word from our guy Project Path that Mr. Porter was banned from the NBA. He just got hit with the perma ban. Yeah, good. Uh, duh. So, I mean, we knew that was coming. He's gonna be a great streamer, though. He's got all that time, all that money. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I look forward. Maybe yeah. menace to basketball. Can't wait. Can't wait. I mean, Hit the DMs. He'll be at a park somewhere dunking on a kid. <laughs> Something. <laughs> um, your boy Matt Merritt going big fish hunting. Um, Oregon State transfer running back Damian Martinez is expected to get an in-home visit from Miami and Mr. Merritt, big time player, two thousand yards, sixteen <laughs> touchdowns in his first two seasons. He'll have two years of eligibility remaining. Dog, Miami is loading up. Might I say? They're back. I was in a space yesterday. They're back. Were you really? No. Oh, I was going to say. But I know there was a space yesterday talking about how they're back. Probably. There's one every day. Yeah, Miami, uh, Kane's unfiltered. They do yeah, them 24 7. 24 7. Anytime you want to hear that Miami's back, jump into Kane's unfiltered. They're back. But I mean, honestly, they're they're making moves, right? I don't I don't even know how good they're going to be. I, I, I think that uh, Mark Fletcher kid that they got from Ohio State with NIL money was going to be a really good player, anyways. But I, the, bringing in Cam Ward, bringing in uh, Damian Martinez. I, I think they're they're active. You like to see that, right? Now, I don't know how good their line's going to be, their defense. Like, there's a lot of question marks, but bringing in superstars certainly won't hurt. Well, they've recruited offensive line well since Mario got well, there, so those I, guys are now usually, strong. Yeah, those guys, well, they, I mean, they, they have. Like, they've got yeah. a, a good amount of five stars or whatever in, in the fold. So, it feels like they're adding talent. I expect them, Zach, to be in the top. 
12, maybe a blue chip ratio with a quarterback who had some success last year. Yeah. If they land this running back, he had a good year last year to pair him with Mark Fletcher. I don't know if he's got an injury thing going on as well. And uh, that, I mean, the receiving core, they've got some, some speed from down there in South Florida. They got rid of, of Josh Gaddis and their schedule is set up not to be that, that bad of one. I mean, <laughs> they start off with Florida who we both have questions about. Then they got Florida AM, and Ball State, USF, those are all wins. Virginia Tech should be a win. Cal, then they're off. And then it gets a little treacherous, right? Louisville should be good, but they've had, they're having checks bounce. So we don't know what their team's going to look like. Yeah, it's fucking their whole line just left. I think yeah. they're they're probably a win. Something like that. Florida State, probably a loss. Yeah. Duke, probably a win. Georgia Tech, toss up. Depends on, if we, <laughs> if, if, depends on if we learn victory formation yet or not. Don't know. It's still up for debate. Then they have another off week. Mm. Two in one season. How about yeah. that? Wake Forest, and then they end with Kyle McCord and Syracuse. Zach, I mean, you just said you just of that whole schedule, you just gave me one probable loss. Yeah, but we'll see what Florida State actually looks like. I st I have Florida State winning, but there's some unknown there too. If Mario goes eleven and one, mm -hmm. oh shit! Now on the flip side, the other side of it, if they are ten and one. Going into the final week, and their playoff hopes get ended by Kyle by McCord. Kyle Hellcat McCord. Oh my God, I'm going to be the worst person on the internet. <laughs> That's going to be phenomenal. Wild. I know this much. Mario better fucking put up or shut up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's time to go. We Miami, the Miami fan base, the the administration, they need to see some trajectory here. Ten and two, something. Otherwise, it, it might be over because your next topic is crazy right here. Yeah. Mario Cristobal was credit, credited $22.7 million in total pay for 2022 calendar year. The largest ever single year amount for an athletic department employee on a tax form by a private university, according to USA Today. Dog, that's fucking like, crazy. Why? <laughs> why did he make so much? I yeah, you know. He made $22.7 million? God, man. And that's the problem with these private schools. You don't know the contracts. Who knows what he was getting paid and what they what they gave him to leave Oregon? Like, mm -hmm. $22.7 million? That's uh, unheard of. Yeah, that's that that's the highest single-year salary in the history of college football. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, Saban's, guys, Saban made the most. And I believe Saban was right there at $12 million. Yeah. That's $10 million more than that. That is that is a crazy number when I read that. I'm like, holy shit, because that puts you in the upper echelon of NFL head coaching contracts. Yeah, it's wild. That's Nuts. wild that he made that much. And, I, and because it's a private school, I don't have the breakdown of why or how, but, like, I want to know why or how. Yeah. I, it, it's it's hard and it's confusing to to think about. And honestly, when when he left Oregon for Miami, I understood it if the pay was similar. But I also felt like Oregon in the NIL era, moving forward in that era, um, obviously we didn't know if they're going to go join the Big Ten at that point. Felt like a school that would capitalize greatly mm -hmm. from the NIL era, and they have just under a different well, coach. And now that NIL is legal, we saw the difference, right? Oregon's last two head coaches, right? You had well, Mario left when NIL was legal. I mean, we didn't, it wasn't established and yeah. built. Well, yeah, right? he, he left during Texas AM buying that, class. right? And and it, you know, most schools like Ohio State were just trying to figure this shit out, yeah. And he got you know, him and Willie Taggart, the last two coaches at Oregon, both of them left for bigger jobs, right? And Oregon was somewhat a large stepping stone job, mm -hmm. but we saw this past cycle, Dan Lanning said no thanks to Alabama. Ooh. Big and, difference. And a and like two schools. Big difference. Who are, who are huge. Yeah, I, I guess like for me, like Mario Cristobal left when they were able to give kids shoe, de shoe deals because uh, Kevon Thibodeau got a shoe deal yeah. from Oregon. First ever, you know, uh, college, college athlete with a shoe deal. And <laughs> if you can't see the potential in that when Phil Knight's backing things up, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, no, I yeah. mean, I, I would have thought that when NIL became legal, like, oh, shit, the first thought is Phil Knight's about to – about go, to really make Oregon go crazy. Go fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, he already did it with the uniforms, and that was all he could legally do. Right. And he brought in some really good coaches, but now he can just flat pay players? That was my first thought. Like, oh, Oregon's about to become a real player. <laughs> and then on the flip side, we're, we're looking at what Oregon's done. So when Oregon lost Mario Cristobal, it's crazy how, you know, in that moment it felt like, fuck, 
it's over. Like, yeah, like another one, like another one. Like, we're not gonna be able to be a destination job. Like, we're we're gonna get fucked again. And then, and then, how do they rebound? They added Dan Lanning, and Dan Lanning's gone on a crazy tear. And it looks like they're about to add elite safety transfer Jacoby Matthews, who's between Oregon and Florida State from A and M. Um, he was the number one safety in the country a couple years ago. He got in the bought class, right? Yeah, he was in the bought class, in the, the purchased yeah. class, the purchased class. Yep, the famous purchased class. And he's down between two schools. Oregon's adding a ton of talent. Obviously, they added that elite corner in that game in Eugene, week six. It's going to be looming really, really large. And an important note up for the transfer portal, Zach. Uh, this is from from Big Time Duck. The SEC doesn't allow spring transfers to go to SEC schools. Mm. So anybody that transfers from the SEC, if they want to win an Addy, there's two schools, two. Ohio State, Oregon. Yeah, that's it. And that's what the AM stuff is going to benefit because it looks like Ohio State might be done, at least on defense. Yeah. So Oregon's going to have the biggest bag and the least competition to add kids like that. That's yeah. a huge deal. I, I, I'm curious. You brought up the portal window because it is open. When is when is what are these Michigan players leaving that these that other people have been talking about? I do not know. They said there's going to be uh, multiple players leaving, and, and uh, one, at least one of them was going to be a really big name. That's what yeah. I was told from other shows. Well, when's when's that happening? Yeah, I mean, I, ha- I haven't seen it. I've, I've tried to scan on three because I thought that maybe a Mason Graham could go to Texas because that was like one of the rumors. Because I've said um, from day one, no one's leaving. Right? Yeah, you have no I, no starters. And honestly, like I thought maybe that the sanctions um, that we'll talk about here in a sec would push somebody to the portal because it came down on the day the portal opened. Mm-hmm. But they seem to be holding strong. <laughs> Hold the line. I try to I, I try to tell people. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm 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 hopeful. But, you know, who knows? Shout out to Keon Sab for skedaddling. <laughs> Gorky, thanks for the two. God bless this show and platform. Minister Sports above all. Appreciate you, Gorky. Mm-hmm. Darius Boom, thanks for Let's becoming go. a member. Got a, and that Abby is dope. We love, you know who that is, Zach? I got a dollar if you tell me who that is. No, not a fucking clue. That is Goku. Goku. Oh, I did know that name. Yeah. But I didn't know what he what he looked like. From uh, from Dragon Ball Z. But that's, yeah. a, that's an interesting one because that's Ultra Instinct Goku. Oh. Uh, yeah. You're deep in your... Deep anime in the bag, bag deep in the bag coach zach member thanks for the 20 what denard did was not a mistake it was a choice and a terrible one especially one from someone in charge of helping grow young men how can i trust him to teach my kid to be a better person and make good choices truly sad no it's, it absolutely was a choice but i mean it's still now in hindsight was a mistake that he made right uh, most mistakes are choices right mm-hmm. so yes i agree it was a choice he should get fired like Really not a good deal for player personnel guy, a guy that's trying to mold young men. Absolutely agree. Really, really dumbass decision. But we're, he should face the repercussions now, and then it can be viewed as a mistake until he keeps repeating it. Then it's a pattern and a behavior. So right now, as far as I know, that's the first time he's ever been charged with DUI. That is a horrible mistake, and he needs he's gonna it's gonna cost him his job. Now let's let it let him be reborn. Like let's let's forgive that with time, and I don't think we should crucify him. And he can never work in college football again as long as it's not a pattern. He doesn't do shit like that all the time. Right. Belisari, thanks for the five. I had someone ask if this was the quarterback for Ohio State. Belisari, uh, it's happening every day. Of course it is. Of course Steve, it is. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Steve Belisari. <laughs> I think his. Uh, hey, if you know, you know. <laughs> his nephew's a pretty good quarterback too. From what really? I've heard, yeah, in Ohio. Greg's son. Because uh, so. Steve's brother Greg was also a Buckeye great. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank you for the five. This punishment could be between two and nine, depending on when the probation is d- determined Bingo. to have started. From Bingo. a Michigan fan, though, fuck Jim Harbaugh. Ooh. That, that's that's the whole key. And I said it before. And I know I, I saw Kirk Barton and the scooper talking about this is going to be repeat offenders. I don't know that that's true. I believe that pro- my opinion is they got hit with the probation yesterday, and probation started yesterday. It would be wild to like make it retroactive, right? Yeah, like you or can't not, be on probation if you don't know if you're not checking in with your parole officer, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you weren't on probation, you are now. Yeah, like you just got convicted for that crime. Yeah. So like, I'm not gonna hit you with like all this behavioral stuff. No, you didn't violate probation because you weren't on probation when you did the violation. You didn't know, but you still did this other crime that we can still punish you. For. Yeah, they still get punished for that, but they can't right. get the. I don't believe they can get the repeat offender yeah. uh, violation because. But I also don't know how things. I don't know how shit works, dog. <laughs> I'm just. I just know how to read super chats. Bella, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for becoming a member. What a guy. And Appreciate if, you. If it is your son or nephew that is a good quarterback, let me know in the chat. Or if you are the son or nephew. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. If you are the son or nephew, bro, you're in school. 
That's all right. My son watches at school. <laughs> he, I literally was talking to my son's old baseball coach. His name's David Diley. His son's name is David Diley. And so his son will super chat during school sometimes. You've seen him, right? Yeah, and we I always thought it's the dad. Yeah, and he said he said, I I've had a couple of people like, hey, I saw you uh super chat in Zach's show. He was like, No, no, that was my son <laughs> during lunch. <laughs> He's spending his money. So shout out to the highest eighth graders if you're watching right now. Yeah, a couple of real ones. DC Buckeye, thank you for becoming a member. So if you don't know about it, you can become an official member of the Menace Army. Go to our YouTube homepage. I believe you can do it on your phone now. I was told yesterday, and just yeah. you join. It's five bucks a month. You get a custom uh, Avi, custom emojis, and you have a little check mark. And Chris calls you official member all the time. Yeah, I mean, you know I throw that in a super chat, but I do want to get a quick word from us or our partner, whatever's next. Well, we are our own partner, right? It's like we masturbation. Are. We'll be right okay. back after this. I menace army. When we don't have ads, we just self promote. They're kind of narcissistic, I guess. But if you love the show, you love the platform, you love the growth, where we're going. Here's a great way for you to support us. Menace2merch.com. The number two. We have like 10 or 12 items on there right, right now. The rebrand. You see the shirt I'm wearing. Kind of the Menace Superman shirt. It's got the down the spine. It's got Menace to Sports, um, which you can see on the website. But um, we priced everything fairly low. This is more about promotion and kind of getting you guys to rep our brand across the country. So we got a, we got female gear. We got a, bath, a one-piece bathing suit. Uh, don't. I actually need to take the two piece off. It's fucking awful. We got a sample, so don't order that. But we're we're quality control right now. We got hoodies, we got cutoff shirts, we got workout shirts. This is a fitness shirt. It's outstanding. And I'm gonna add more stuff this week. So there's about be about 20 items. Um, takes a couple weeks to get to you, but go go support us. Go to menacetomerch.com and rock the brand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're just uh had some breaking news sent over. You want to know why it's always fuck California on this show? Modern day out in California, powerhouse, by the way, was led by longtime coach Bruce Rollison for 34 years, built a monster, monster out there. I believe that's where Amon Ra went now that I said it. It is. Just monster program. He retired, and they brought in a guy named Frank McManus, a fiery coach. You know what he did in year one, Chris? What did he do? Won the state championship in California. Big. Won the national championship. Huge. The best high school football team in the entire United States of our Americas. Huge. All the Americas. North, South, all of them put together. Best one. Just got fired. You know why? Because he said bad words. He said curse words. And they fired him. The national champion coach got fired. That's why it's fuck California. I just think back to the training session I took my son to, my guy Vinny, saying, don't be a fucking pussy. Like, yeah. hey, Vinny, you can't work in California, bro- brother, <laughs> nor would you want to. Oh, my goodness, bro. For cussing? For cussing. National champs. Talk state about- champs. California's a big state, Chris. I don't know if you know. It's not like winning the New Hampshire state championship. Yeah. Like winning the California state championship, you have to be ridiculous. And they want a natty. A natty. Which that's voted on, whatever, what the fuck ever. But still, still won still. a state title in California. That's, that's not easy to do. Fired for saying bitch or whatever oh, word he said. Oh my goodness, bro, Wild that's time. absurd. Like they couldn't even spin it more to like, like, um, like emotional abuse. Like, come on, it's California. Get creative, right? Like he might get arrested. Like verbal. Can we get a verbal <laughs> abuse in there before? But we fired him for cussing. Is the, the headline literally says for cursing, not like verbal? They could have, right? Yeah, they like spun the narrative. Like, been like spin for it. verbal abuse. What? Like he told a kid that quit uh, mm-hmm. on a workout. Like, told don't a be kid, a pussy. Told a kid, go be a dookie. Yeah. Uh, come on, man. That was a deep cut. That warranted more of a reaction. Go be go, a dookie like be Jordy a dookie. Cash. Yeah. yeah absolutely. On deep that was a deep cut. That was, you know, Urban Meyer could never coach high school football in California. Never. 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 And might honestly. would have recruit in there. If neither could I. Mm, I could never coach in high school, in high school football yeah. in California. Neither could I. Bro, my little brother's boxing coach be cussing in there, and it's like eight year olds in that right. class talking. Like all the parents are cool with it, so that's that's crazy. That's that's crazy. Who he, snitched? Also, probably some pussy, <laughs> right? Some soft ass kid that was getting coached hard yeah. went home and cried to his mom. Probably has probably is like doesn't know his gender yet, and came home and was like, "This man is yelling at me," and he said the b word. For the sake of the culture, I really hope it wasn't a white DB because they really been working really hard to get up out of the mud. Like they really started from the fucking bottom and they're really up now. And this would be just a massive step back for my white DBs everywhere. It is. And you you know who you know when we knew white DBs were going out? What? Remember the Titans. Oh. My guy Petey. 
major fucking liability. Major. Major. They they integrated the school. P- everyone realized after you had some black athletes running around like, damn, Petey sucks. Yeah. Petey got put on the bench. That was the end of white corners. Bro, but white corners, like the last like three years have had a major come up. They're coming back. Like like the dude with the with yeah. the mustache got drafted ahead of Keely Ringo. We're about yeah. to see Cooper DeGene like, be a first rounder. Like the update. They got the update. They got the update. And then, and uh, white corners are coming back. And maybe it's maybe they used to play receiver and they said that opt we'll switch sides. We'll play the other way. We'll yeah. be on this side. So I'm really hoping that it that it definitely was not a white corner. Um <laughs> Colorado, <laughs> after Prime said we don't attract players who want to hit the portal, we don't attract players who want to hit the uh, who want NIL. They just had their leading edge rusher at the portal um that's why he doesn't believe in it he's got guys running to it yeah oh, we don't believe in that it's not there it's not real guys i promise he literally said we don't attract players that want to hit the portal bitch you got one right now first of all your team was built by portal right. second of all they're re-entering the portal and cormani mclean um hit the portal as well and that's the number number one corner in the in the country a hey, year that, or two ago he was a good corner for them last year Real it was good a, hey colorado was a pretty house but it was built on sand yeah. And we said it when it happened. Like, okay, Louis bags are coming. Mm-hmm. One, they better be Louis, and two, they better stay. <laughs> those, uh, those Louis bags were rented. Yeah, I hope those Louis bags have a little toughness and 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 can really make it through the hard times because yeah. it's going to be rough, and it was rough, and now they're leaving. Bro, Carmine McLean went. I, I went to go grab it, but it wasn't worth kind of listening to the whole thing. But Carmine McLean went in a Colorado space, and it was like I think I'm pretty sure it was every single black Colorado fan in there. Um, which was wild, and they were yelling at my boy, and he was like, "Y'all, it's not that serious, <laughs> right? It's not that serious. I just want to go play ball somewhere else. I'm not fucking with Colorado." So it was definitely a weird display. It's what it is, and then it's just it's it's wild. And then I saw I saw the Instagram post like offensive recruits hit up Shador, defensive yeah. defensive recruits hit up his other Shiloh, kid, Shiloh. Yeah. Like now you got the coach's sons doing the transfer recruiting, but why are they hitting them up? I thought they don't fuck with transfer portal people. I'm so confused right now. It's a lot of hypocrisy, man. A lot of hypocrisy coming out of Prime. I, you know, it's I, I'm rooting for Prime, but me too. I don't feel like this is going to end very well. Oh, it's not. Like it, this feels like it's headed uh, the the bad the bad direction, <laughs> and it feels like it's it's not going well. Especially well, like seeing players kind of be the, the the personnel people too, kind of bugs me a little bit. Well, and, and you know the, the unfair treatment those players got. Remember, they got to skip the first uh, what three days of yeah. practice last fall to go to a fashion show. Yeah, it, it's. This what what Deion Sanders did here was was career wise he made a fatal error. He thought he was so big time that it didn't matter the place he could make it into what Al- Alabama. Right. It's like, dude, it's Colorado. They've never been good. Not even one time. Like when Cordell Stewart there, they were okay. Like I don't give a shit who you are. You ain't gonna win at Colorado. Not like that. And he hasn't been recruiting at a high clip, which is bothersome. Obviously, yeah. his roster retainment has not been elite. Um, he's had some staffers that have left because they didn't quite like it. And he's not a great X's and O's guy himself. He's more of like the game manager, and he's, he's supposed to be a motivator. And so when the things <laughs> that – like when when you're supposed to be getting Jimmys and Joes and you're not, and that is kind of your claim to fame, that's a major issue. And I'm rooting for him. But, brother, this does not feel like it's going the right way or going to end how he wants it to end. And I would not be surprised if after this last year with Shiloh and them, he skedaddles and maybe – Take, either takes another job or decides he wants to hang it up and it's all for his kids. Yeah. Their spring game's 10 days away. They're scheduled, I mean, knowing what we know, outside of, of really Shador and Travis Hunter. That's what they do have returning, yeah, right? Sh- Shiloh. Shiloh, kind of, but he's a corner. He's not like, or whatever, DB. Whatever. He's not Travis Hunter. Right. Oh, he's, facts, not, facts. he's not someone that you have to be like, oh, my God, they have Shiloh Sanders. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, he's a good player. But they got North Dakota State, not really the the – uh, division, whatever school you want to play. Then they got to go at Nebraska week two at Colorado state who beat them last year, Baylor at central Florida, Kansas state at Arizona. I don't know what Arizona looks like now that what's his dick went to Washington, Jed, Jed fish, then Cincinnati, Texas tech, Utah, Kansas, Oklahoma state. Mm. Like, ah, it's probably gonna be another year, yeah. another year like last year. That's going to be a tough. That's going to be a tough go for them. Um, I do want to talk Michigan sanctions and then hit some super chats after uh, the break. But right now, step one, we got these are all violations from the COVID season. Last year, yesterday, when this episode, when this, when this broke, we kind of didn't really know what was going on. We were trying to like gather information what? as the show was going and online. Just think about that timeline now. 
It's 2024. COVID was right. in 2020. He's run Four years later, we got the sanctions. We got yeah. the punishment. Which is which is wild. Like, what the fuck took so long? And the major notes of these penalties are three years of probation for Michigan. We knew that. Yeah. Um, a fine and recruiting restrictions. They will not say what the fine was. And then a one-year show cause order for the coaches. Now, people theorize that it's all the coaches that left. But yesterday's statement from Ward Manual. Today's joint resolution pertains to the University of Michigan Athletic Department and s- several former and, and current, current and current employees we are pleased to reach a solution on this matter so that our student athletes and our football program can move forward. We have no additional information and cannot comment further on other aspects of the NCAA's inquiry. So that's obviously about the science stealing stuff. So I found it interesting because the belief from Michigan people was, well, nothing's going to happen because these are all from guys that have left. Mm-hmm. Ward Manuel, I believe, confirmed that it is people that are currently employees of the university. And the only thing on that list, three years probation, a fine, recruiting restrictions, and one-year show cause orders for the coaches involved. The only thing that could be impactful, because a fine, fuck it, get a booster to pay the fine. You're good. That doesn't hurt you. The only thing that matters is, what are the recruiting restrictions? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about limiting scholarships? Are we talking about less days on the road in spring or fall? Like, what exactly are the recruiting restrictions? That matters. And then, when did probation start? Those are the only two things that matter. Yeah. Everything else is bullshit. If probation started yesterday and recruiting restrictions are like, uh, you lose some days in spring, it is a nothing burger. Nothing at all. I had a couple of Michigan people hit me up and saying Sharon Moore was not the offensive line coach for Michigan in 2020 when these took place because he was coaching tight ends there. I just want to float that out there because I, I did get a, a quick – quick couple well, DMs about that. What does it matter? He was on staff. Yeah, I know. I was just pointing out that he was on staff because some people try to make it seem like maybe he wasn't on staff. Oh, so yeah. He was definitely on staff. He just wasn't the line coach yet. Right. He was a tight end coach. Right. So that's kind of the, the step before. Um, it, you know, the fact that no suspensions have come with this, to me, mean that the NCAA was happy with, you know, what Sharon serving that one game last year and obviously Jimmy serving half the season last year. Yeah. So it makes me think well, he only that- served three for this, though, right? Oh, yeah. He, he served, served three, three for this, for this and, then and then three, three at the end of the, the year. for the, He's just like, give which, it. holy shit, on the year you win the natty, you, you play, what, 12, 13 games, you only coach seven? <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, that that is uh, that that is wild. But um, for, for Sharon Moore, obviously not kind of where you want to start. How quickly do you think further punishments will come for the – um, sign stealing stuff, or do you think that we won't we won't see that? I mean, it, it took him four years for this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I I always say the NCAA takes forever. I thought six months, nine months was forever. This one took four years. The the COVID violations were during COVID four years ago. That's fucking crazy. Crazy. So, and- like, honestly, if we find out what the, their punishment is for the sign stealing gate, one year from today. That's pretty quick and efficient for the NCAA. So the recruiting restrictions, I guess, are in alignment with the level one mitigated classification for the school. So it makes me wonder how, like, they're they're going to lose at least a week on the road, right? Like you, you like if it's <laughs> if it's a level one mitigation classification, that would make me feel like okay, this is what happened to similar to what happened to the the, the coach, your uh, Alex Atkins at Florida State, right? Yeah, like, and, and honestly, like, like that, a week off the road, that sucks. You don't get to see kids for a certain work, number of days. You work around it. Yeah. I mean, it, what's the ultimate impact of that? Probably next to nothing. Mm-hmm. Scholarship restrictions are a big deal. Yeah. Like they're, we, we had, we had, we were down, one. we were down three scholarships in 2012 because of the whole fucking tattoo gate. And it was a bitch because that's three kids every year for four years or how this is for three years that you can't bring in. So in the end, you're missing, if it's over three years, nine potential players. That could be great players. Like, let's say you have a 40, 44% hit rate. That's four great players that are not playing for Michigan that otherwise would have been, hypothetically. That's a big deal. So remove four starters from Michigan right now and make one of them, like, really good. So I guess when I, when I ask you on the scale of, of one to five, five being this is super harsh, one being this wasn't harsh enough, we're – are you on the penalties for Michigan regarding the burger gate and not cooperating? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think if Jim Harbaugh was still the coach, I think he would have got hit pretty hard. Okay. Um, because the lack of co- cooperation was the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Having the kids up illegally, definitely not good. Buying them a burger, 
not a big deal to me, but whatever. It's kind of, it was kind of illegal, but not cooperating is the problem. And so with Jim Harbaugh being gone, I think this is about appropriate. Like didn't, I mean, get some days off the road. Maybe can't have a certain, <laughs> they, they limit their official visits. I'd say it's a like five being the most severe one being the least severe. This is about a one or a two. How surprised are you that they're the only school that kind of got caught up in this COVID restrictions, COVID violation thing? Because we know of several universities that were recruiting heavily during this period. I mean, shit, Caleb Williams, I don't remember this, Zach. Caleb Williams, during the COVID year, post during that period where you're not allowed to you know, host kids on campus, posted a video of him walking through Oklahoma's practice facilities as a high school kid. Yeah. And nothing ended up happening. Lincoln Riley has like a bulletproof vest. Yeah. He's like Achilles. Like nobody's got his heel yet and everything else is, is invincible. Like we had several cases of, of players going places to walk around campus and running into coaches well, and getting it's, it's like, facility tour. Like, like how, like how was, how is Caleb Williams able to do that? To not, not just do that, but with a group of recruits with him walking through the facility. And I think Mecca was one of the recruits. It's one of those things where I don't I don't remember the exact legislation, what it said, but there's loopholes. So was he with Lincoln Riley? If he wasn't and he was just there, like, oh, I just came to visit the school and on they, my own. They said he came to visit and the door was unlocked. Yeah. Oops, we forgot to lock the door. We'll be more careful next time. Like, that's loophole. Like, didn't that's didn't, so fucking insane. It's so, so insane. But Jim Harbaugh was sitting down eating a fucking double cheeseburger with extra bacon on it with the with the recruit. Like, clearly you were there. Now that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I have heard stories of other recruits going like 10, 15 miles off campus to meet with coaches. Now like, that's at illegal. These, at these little restaurants. That's illegal. Like, um, it'd be like if a coach at Ohio State took a recruit to Urban's Pine House right here, like maybe their top top recruit on their board. That would be highly illegal if if somebody did that. Yeah. Let's hit some super chats. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh <laughs> Bella, sorry. I didn't I did not know you were gonna do that. Bella, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the five. Member Bell, sorry. Also, Michigan is about to be the Iowa of the Great Lakes. All defense, no offense. Trying to win 13 to 6. Well, that's kind of their that was their MO. Yeah. <laughs> Who's gonna have a more suffocating defense this year, Ohio State or Michigan? Whew. I'm gonna go Ohio State. T. Smitty, thanks for the five. I do want your thoughts on, on your guys' spring game. Roll, motherfucking Tide. I'm shocked. Ty Simpson is staying at Bama. I wonder how DeBoer convinced him to stay. Stroud is lucky he went number two because Carolina is a mess. Oh, I agree we, with you on the second part. Major. I agree with you on all of that. I mean, Ty Simpson doesn't win the starting job, and, and he's going to stay? Yeah. I I, I would have thought a highly recruited kid like that would jump in the portal for sure. And, and, and Dylan Morgan, the other kid that yeah. – it was in the same class. But I, they didn't name Jalen Milrow the starter yet, did they? He, By all accounts, he is the starter. I mean, I know he it's, is, it's but, over. like, who knows Who knows what's being said behind closed doors? Right. Don, but, yes, Carolina's been a fucking mess. Mm -hmm. And they will be a So was Houston. Mess. Yeah. But Houston let their coach go pick their quarterback and go from there. Don, thanks for the two. Do a call in Dunkathon when the NCAA drops the hammer. Oh, it, I'm going to do it either way. When the sanctions come out, we're, we'll do a call-in show. <laughs> and somebody's dunking on somebody. <laughs> if the hammer drops, have at it, Buckeyes. If it's a nothing burger, the Michigan fans are going to be talking crazy. The hammer. T. Shicey, thanks for the 10. Sonny playing late in the spring game with the twos and the threes just to get reps, question mark. Why is Simon the automatic starter? Sonny is your best 11, and CJ has waited his turn. They worry me the most to transfer. I've been trying to figure out for, for what, three months since Ryan Day got up there and said it. I don't understand how you, of all the players to guarantee starting spots, to you guarantee one to Cody, but not one to Sonny. It's wild because Cody didn't even start last year and Sonny did. Exactly. And he played really well. Like, I, I got nothing for you. I mean, I got, there's no explanation. And the spring game was awful. I mean, I'm watching, we got to the second half and I'm like, yep, nope, fuck this. Like, every single person that the quarterbacks were throwing to, I'm like, no idea who that is. No idea who that is. No idea who that is. When Sonny Styles and C.J. Hicks both end up playing in the NFL and carving out long careers based off athleticism and physicality and the fact that they are prototypical NFL linebackers, we are all going to sit back and think, holy shit, why were these not our two starting linebackers together? I think Cody's a good player. 
whatever. But from the time they were both recruited, from the time they both signed for Ohio State, it was always supposed to be about C.J. Hicks and Sonny Styles and playing real modern linebacker play and watching those two in the NFL. And I fear now that we will not get to see them on the field playing together in significant snaps. It's going to be one of the biggest what-the-fuck moments on the Ohio State defensive side over the last 10 years. I mean, we saw it, right? And the, the problem that Buckeye fans have is this is like – this is the, the sequel – we saw Baron Browning sit on the bench with Tough Borland playing. Exactly. Like we watched it live in 4K. We were robbed of seeing Pete Warner and Baron Browning, and I think this is that, if not then some, considering both guys are five stars. When mm -hmm. Pete Warner was a three-star inside linebacker that no one thought could play, and it turns out he ran a fucking 4-5. Yeah. So well, I mean, we thought he could play, obviously. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, some y'all be fucking up to me, so I don't really know. Y'all, I mean, y'all also, maybe not you, but y'all also thought that Reed Carrico could play to the point where I thought Reed Whoa. could play. You feel me? Like, I mean, that's that's a different we. I yeah, wasn't that's part of that we. I guess you're right. You're right. You're not a part of that. That's week. and that's part of the problem. Is that, it, is that do we blame that one on COVID eval? Because he was ranked higher than Mark. Probably. Okay. But I mean, there's been a change of guard, right? There has. Like it's a different staff. Yeah, there's been more than one change of guard, brother. Yeah, lots of them. We've been, we've been fucking the guard is like a hot potato at this point. <laughs> Brian, thanks for oh, uh, you know what? Let's get a word. Let's get a quick word, last word, and then we'll knock out some super chats. So get them in. If you haven't liked the video, like the video. We'll be right back after this. What makes this platform different from others outside of the fact we're unfiltered? And I actually worked in college football and might, might know a little bit about the sport and about the game is we open the doors and open the windows and let you inside under the hood in college football. And the best way to do that is our film breakdowns. If YouTube would let us put them out publicly, we would make it all free, but they ding us with a copyright every time. Bourbon and Balls, our off-season project. Every Tuesday night, I pick a bourbon, and at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live and do a live breakdown, interactive. You ask questions. It's all 22 coaches film, so it's not film you, you can see anywhere else. It's not TV copy. This is truly what coaches use, what I used for 15 years of coach of college football. And we break down a topic. We've done a Will, full Will Howard breakdown, breaking down his game, what he was going to add to the Buckeyes. We did the Michigan National Championship game. There's over... 200 game breakdowns in our library. If you want to learn college football at an, in an entirely different way, it's only 20 bucks a month. Or the best deal, if you want to do it, is you can lock it in right now with a 10% discount on patreon.com forward slash menace to sports. And you can get a whole year's worth. That'll include all next season when we break down up to five games a week. We really give you the insight and information you need to be knowledgeable about college football. Because several times, a, a, a sack will happen. And you watch on TV, you're like, God, this O-line sucks. Then you get the coaches film and watch, and they blocked the five guys. They were supposed to block the running back, just released, and was supposed to block a blitzing corner. It was really on the running back, but in your mind, you think the O-line sucks. It's always good to have quality information, and it's entertaining as shit. Drink a little bourbon, hang out with us all offseason, and then get ready for the 2024 college football season. Possibly a nice little run for the Buckeyes on Patreon. Links in the bio. Come hang out with us. There you go. That was some fire merch I was wearing on that uh, yeah. on that little commercial there. Menace to merch.com. There it is. For you to get some fire merch as well. Brian, thanks for the two. Carmani is soft, doesn't like tough coaching. Might be true. I will I do know this. South Florida Express rarely misses. Yeah. And he he, he did not get selected to play on South Florida Express, to my knowledge. Oh, I I didn't. I just assumed that I saw Kirk Parton tweeting about it. I was like, oh, he must not have been on South Florida Express. They must have turned him away. No, makes sense. Shout out Brett Getz. Gorky, thanks for the two. Uh, Jay Porter was never an NBA player. Raptors are just bad. So, yeah, he actually didn't. I don't think he ended up getting drafted. I think he ended up getting signed because his you know, frame and his brother played in the league. Mm. So, shout out to him, though. He got a bag. Got two hey, of them. He made his money one way or another. Yeah, but he's probably going to have to give that shit back, right? No. Is it like criminal investigation? Yeah, probably. I was going to say, Zach, he's definitely not walking away with that. He, we've been to see him on that same island with Diddy. He's 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 on the he's on the jet. Yeah, he's on a jet. You know that Diddy thing he came and went. Bust down by oh, Diddy. God, <laughs> bro, he's like six nine. Hey, it's a power play for Diddy. I don't think he's gay. There's a lot of puns there. You don't think Diddy's gay? I mean, you got to be gay to do what he does, but I think it's more like power. You ever heard that guy that was like, I'm not gay. I just made the decision to fuck a, a dude. Well, that, they say that's what happens in prison. Yeah. It becomes like a power play. Yeah. No, you fuck a guy, you're gay. 
It just is what it is, well, no they, matter the reason. Well, I was listening to a podcast, and they said the rule is as long as you're straight for your last 60 days, you're good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't know if that's the rule, but. You know what they say? Be a bricklayer your whole life. You suck one cock, you're a cocksucker for life. <laughs> um, Yeah. No other show like it on the planet. <laughs> no other show like it. Quinn, thanks for the 20. Zach, ponder on this. If Ohio State quarterbacks are nothing more than mid, does J.J. Smith leave? Will Ryan seek his input on the quarterback decision? He won't seek his input, input and I don't think he's going to leave. At least, I mean, I he's not going to leave. Yeah. Um, maybe if he has a year where, like, they can't get him the ball at all. Like, sure, there's a world that it could exist where he leaves, but I think – Jeremiah Smith's going to be a Buckeye and going to leave a Buckeye and going to go to the draft a Buckeye. I don't think that's going to happen. But let him have a year where he catches 25 balls because the quarterback sucks. I'm officially on the Will Howard's the starting quarterback for Ohio State. 99.9% positive. Really? Yeah. Mm. I think Will not entering the portal um, – is everything. I think it's like the only reason that kid doesn't have yeah, a portal. But, but Chris, at the same time, I'm, I'm not saying that's not true. Mm -hmm. Certainly could be true. But at the same time, all that tells you is he believes he's going to be. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I heard guys are buddy, buddy rumor at rumor has it is that, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're out there playing tennis right now at, at one of Ryan's country clubs, Will and Ryan. So that's QB one, man. <laughs> Stop it. I'm serious. So at, we're, we're at, Kinzel, the, at my country club. Yeah. We're on the, we're on the streets. So, you know, I got people everywhere with binoculars. They're uh, saying they saw Will Howard hey, out there in some cute little tennis ne shorts. Hey, next time you hear that, just tell me. I'll, it's like 100 yards away. I'll walk over to the tennis courts. Got you. I'll, I'll let you know. You know, I got eyes everywhere, eyes in the sky, Chris Drew. I wish I had the house that was right by the tennis courts. I would just just serve it, surveillance yeah, video. They're out there playing tennis. So you only play tennis with a starting quarterback. Serve. <laughs> serve. <laughs> Um, third base investigators. That's what I am. Thanks for the 10. Y'all didn't read my super chat yesterday. Yeah, we did. Snooky, no makeup is not bad. I definitely read that. I yeah, we, you, and we then, read it. And then did you send me the picture of her with no? I got a picture sent to me of her with no makeup. No, on. not me. I'm not gonna hold you. He was he wasn't wrong. It definitely she I I now honestly, someone have showed that to me and said this was Snooky. I'd have been like, no, it's not. You know what I'm saying? She, her, she got a body, but it looks like a sack of potatoes. Like like makeup, no makeup. She's yeah. still frumpy. Well, she, uh, you know, we love Snooky on this on this channel. Or at least half of us do. Actually, more than half. Um, Pat from Jersey also loves Snooky as well. But I will say this: I think on her face ID, she probably has to do like a recognition with and without makeup because there's no way it's the same person. Right. With that being said, anyway, I'm seeing Penn State fans worried about Drew Aller's spring game performance. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it was it was it was not good at all. Uh, he really had a bad day. I've heard really good things about him during spring, so I'm going to chalk it up to a bad day. But the biggest problem Penn State has is they don't have any wideouts. Yeah. None. Like, I, I think Caden Saunders is a good player, mm -hmm. and he might be the only good player. And they had Fleming out there with the twos. They don't know if he's good enough to be a starting Oh, no, they know. Okay. They know. Okay. Well, um, I'm getting concerned because I felt like he was going to be a first-round draft pick to the point where I bet a nice stake dinner on it with my guy Tyler and it's looking like not very good so um Tyler make him take you to Jeff Ruby's um I have no problem not showing getting sick and crawling out the window I'm not <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here I thought of you know I just need to roll our state for two years then yeah. right like we didn't specify years so I might end up sneaking sneaking one in there Gorky thanks for the two member Gorky um Leangelo Ball is better than Joey Porter for real I mean I I believe that I can see it. I can see it. Jared, thanks for the five. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Jim Tressel yeah. hired his brother to coach running backs sure at did. Ohio State. He Dick Tressel, legend. Huh. Dick Tressel. Like, who doesn't fucking love that hey, guy? Mobsters don't get charged with felonies. You can't charge somebody from Youngstown for yeah. anything. That's what I'm saying. Not that he's a mobster. I'm just saying he's, you know, the mob in Youngstown is more of what that's a joke about. No, Chris said he's in the mob. Yeah. Well, Shiano is. Mm -hmm. Shiano's the real mobster. <laughs> Keep chopping. Chris Blunt, my guy, thanks for the five. What's up with my motherfucking guys? Had fun at the live show. Spent the weekend with Annie Joe's family. Shout out to Tom and the gang. Are we overlooking Mech because of age? What do you mean? A Mecca, like are we we're overlooking a Mecca because we like the shiny new thing? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I also I also didn't think he was as good as people thought last year. But you, then, then you start to have that image in your head, and then he goes out and makes a one-handed snag like that, which is very impressive. Still doesn't mean he was 
great mm -hmm. because he wasn't like a first. He didn't look like a first round receiver on Saturday. And everyone told me he was the second best receiver behind Marv last year. But I think we have undervalued Emeka because you have shiny new toys. Yeah. And you're a little disappointed last year. Honestly, Zach, I don't know if you felt this watching the the, uh, the TV copy. You know, last year was all about thick Mecca. He was thick. Yeah. This year, it's thin Mecca. He's yeah. on the Slim Jims, and he yeah. looks a little bouncier and springier. Or am yeah. I bugging? No, I, I thought he looked – he moved well. Yeah. I thought he – I mean, the, the wideouts still can't block. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, but – Bro, give it up. I, I have to <laughs> give it up eventually. I'm sorry. Give it up, Doc. But every – I mean, we're watching the whole thing, and it wasn't even me. I was like, I'm over it. I already expected. Mm -hmm. And they're like whiffing blocks. And I'm like, damn, oh, that's that's the Buckeyes we know. And people in the live chat on Bourbon and Ball last night are like flipping out. How the fuck can we not address one fucking problem? There's a major problem. Like, the fuck is Heartline? I'm like, damn, y'all are really going in. Like, I just expected yeah. at this point. Gonna, and if you comment on it, oh, you're oh, I'm a hater. Jealous. I'm a hater. Uh, y'all think Zach would spend time with those divas? He got me right here. Good. I got it. I got enough diva and Chris. There is no diva over here. Maybe a sprinkle, but sprinkle. <laughs> Shout out Tracy <laughs> and the salt bag. Wisconsin Buckeye. Thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate you. That's how you support the platform here on YouTube. That's how you do it. Andre, thanks for the five. I will never order another draft beer at Urban's Tap House. It was awful, skunk. And he was there last Saturday night, too. Damn, you didn't let me know. I'd have pulled up on him. Yeah. Hello, what's up, bro? What's up, Herbs? What's up, Frank? <laughs> That's what I call him. <laughs> Frank. What's up, Frank? You know, that that place, it's it, it's interesting, man. I I've I've been there uh twice. I told you one time Josh Pate and I went there, and that was a great, great food, great time. Probably mostly just the company was 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 outstanding. Um, and I went there another time to meet uh Brett Adams, who was a, a lawyer, and he does a law podcast that I went on. He was there and I met him. And the beer was fine, yeah. but it's overpriced as hell. I'd rather go to Revelry or Yogi's. Better food, better beer, hotter chicks, like better atmosphere. And you fuck with Twin, you fuck with Twin Peaks. Yeah, I fuck with Twin Peaks. Justine and I took uh, who we take Lily and Luke to lunch there like two weeks ago. Nice. We took Cam and all his friends there one time too, mm. and it was like these boys had never seen a, a cleavage before. I got to show you sketch talking about his time at Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. please, please <laughs> that's, do. That's what I got to yes. do. Absolutely. Something to look forward to after the show. <laughs> after the show, I got you. Um, Gorky, thanks for the two. Superstar coaches don't work out. Remember that. Mm. Is that real? Like, don't physically work out or don't pan out? I think I think physically work out. Mm. They work out. I mean, Urban, uh, Dan Campbell and Mike Vrabel look like they work out a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and Urban was on the, on the walking machine. Yeah, Urban He's, walked backwards on treadmills. Like, hey, stop it. That's not working out. It's called D1 feet, baby. He got to be able to backpedal. Yeah, back pain, so you got to walk backwards. Is that what it is? Yeah. If you, have, oh. if you have lower back pain, they tell you to walk backwards on the treadmill. Damn, I have If I see that, I'm... I'm Taking you over to fucking the retirement village to have lunch. Okay. I don't have back pain. I was about to lie. I, <laughs> actually, okay. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Third base investigators. Thanks for the two. Scholarships in the NIL era are irrelevant. Word rice. I mean, they're they're a little relevant. I mean, you have to get a scholarship mm -hmm. just at, just to land a kid. Even if you could pay him a bunch of money, he could pay his own way. Like that, that optically looks like that's they don't they don't value you and another t another school will absolutely kill you kill you in recruiting yeah i i agree penguin thanks for the five two things when did the ncaa find out about burger gate time frame of investigation and the key point for the sanctions is level one violation against the school okay so i, I you know the i know they knew about it last fall right this, this past season? Yes. Oh, well, yeah. He served a three-game suspension. So I think they knew about it in the summer, or at least the summertime was going to start to get some public grumblings. Because mm -hmm. that was right around the time when Jim Harbaugh was supposed to sign his extension, remember? And then it was like, no, we got some other problems we got to figure out, this, that, and the third. So they've known about it for uh, over, over a year. But my guess is they probably knew about it for at least two years, right? I would imagine so. I mean, like I if, if they didn't, how would they even found out to begin with? The allegations, the violations were raised just after the 2022 season. So that's when okay. they found out. So that just whatever January 2023. So it's been a year and four months. Damn, who who was snitching that many years later? Right, like, that's kind of that was two that was two years ago. Like that burger must have been good as hell. Because <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Because if I snitch twice on you 
in the in the when Rob and I hear about it and you don't get back to me, I'm done snitching. It's a fucking burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really hell. That revelry bro. burger. There's yeah. there's the next one. You want to talk about goaded? Go get that revelry burger. Wait, you remember when I first moved here every day, just getting a new burger? <laughs> I was, I was, Chris went over here to North High Brewing and had a burger, and he was like, that's the best burger I ever had. I was like, Chris, Chris, come with me to Revelry. He had a burger. He was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, bro. That shit it was, was so good. good. Shout out my guy, Rich. That shit was crazy, bro. I was tripping. And then I discovered that the quality of beef in Columbus is just better. Than Akron. Yeah, because everywhere I was going is the best burger, even if fucking five guys. <laughs> Burgers and fries, because, you know, you got to finish it or else you'll get hit with the ditty yeah. um, in there. But, yeah, wild times. Expedition Greg. Thank you for gifting a uh, membership. We appreciate you for doing that. It's a real one. It's a, it's a, it's a real one. Keel, member Keel, thanks for the two. The recruiting restrictions were extreme. Yeah, but I need details. What does that mean? Yeah, I couldn't. Like, have. extreme in what fashion? What what realm? Is it is it official visits they're allowed to bring in? Is it days on the road recruiting in spring or fall? Is it scholarship limitations? Like, there's so many things it could be, and, and the impact varies. I need to know what they are. Until they come out, I, I can't even tell you if it's a big deal or not. Yeah. Cole, thank you for the 10. How close are the coaches of these high school powerhouse programs with college recruiters, position coaches at Power 5? Very. I mean, Roger Harriet at St. Thomas Aquinas, right? Pat Sertain when he was at American Heritage. Those were my motherfucking dudes. Like, Ted Ginn, senior. Yeah. Like, fucking, that motherfucker walks in. It's no like, hey, can I see Coach Day? It's like, he just walks past the secretary, walks right in and sits down. Like, you're close. Mm-hmm. Keel, thanks for the two. They already suck on the trail. Sad case. And just they're already so ass on the trail. Like they need every advantage they can get. I'm waiting. Dog, do you have you heard anything on their NIL? Like, is it good or is it bad, bro? I don't I'm know. So I'll, I'll, I'll find out. Yeah, I don't know. Please ask somebody for me because I'm so confused when I do like my beat corners. It's like I don't know what Michigan's got going on. I've heard there. both. I've heard it's outstanding and I've heard it's a fucking train wreck. So I've heard it's outstanding in terms of like some of their PR stuff and fundraising efforts, but then I've heard that it's bad whenever they miss out on the recruit. Yeah, and so it I seems don't know like they just blame it for shitty recruiting, right. honestly. So I don't know if they're getting beat for recruits and spinning back on that or if it is bad. Because I also know that, remember, the foundation, even when they weren't doing a great job in the beginning, they were pumping it up like they were doing a fucking great job. Yeah. And then we found out that nobody was getting paid. So it's just, it's a real confusing thing. It is a bunch a shit show. Yeah. Across the board. Well, that's college athletics for you. Yes, it is. 787 Robert. That's the worst Avi I've ever seen. But thank you for the 10. It looks like. Um, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> Are scholarships lost the total number of scholarships as a team or recruiting scholarships? In theory, if it's a team total, they can drop a couple kids to walk on and have NIL pay for their scholarships. Yeah, they could if that kid's okay with it. Yeah. They absolutely could. I, I My guess is it's, re, it's team scholarships, right? That's usually how they do it. They don't well, usually do – well, it's, it's all. There's only one type of overall, scholarship, overall right? Umbrella. There's 85 scholarships they can give to football players, right? And they'll they'll drop it down to 82, or whatever. That's what we did. They dropped it to 82. We could only have 82 scholarships, so that means every year we had to be down three. Keel, thank you for the two member. Keel, any Michigan fans want to bet on nine and a half wins? I got the under. Oh, you're gonna get flooded with that one. Paging Jordan. Well, here we go. Here's the thing. They have. I believe they have. Texas, do they have Texas, Oregon, and Ohio State? I know they have. I, I believe so. I know they got fucked year one. Michigan's football schedule. Let's take a gander. Let's take a look. In so the they got of- Fresno State. That's definitely an L. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there was the Fresno State dog. This show would hit. So Texas guys. at home, USC at home, Minnesota at home, at Washington, Illinois at or, Illinois. Uh, Michigan State at home, Oregon at home, and then Ohio State. So Ohio State, Oregon, Washington, USC, Texas. Five, okay. five losable games in okay. some way, shape, or form. That's that's honestly, I would, I would, if I'm, I think that's a good, a good line from Keel. Yeah, I mean, if they, so the question would be, do they beat three of the five? If they yeah. do, they got ten wins. Well, I think they get handed losses by Ohio State, Oregon, and uh, and Texas. There you go. And that, that you know, there we have it. Uh, Nick, thank you for the five. Zach, how big of a jump is it to go from a position coach to being the head coach and what challenges are there? Great question, member Nick. Yeah, um, it's it's a completely different job, right? Obviously, as a position coach, you've been 
coaching your unit like a mini team. So you kind of have an idea. You definitely have an idea how to build a culture and do all those things that head coaches need to do. Um, it's just at a much greater scale. And you've also observed head coaches be head coaches. So it's like shadowing someone for a long time to learn how they did it and learn from it and decide how you want to do it. But it's entirely different, like completely different. Now, recruiting, similar. You're just recruiting all positions and way more kids, right? Like as a receiver coach, I recruited like 15 kids. As the head coach, you're recruiting like 100. Now, you have help doing that, but you have to know them, know their mom. I mean, it's it's a big job, big jump. Lax, thanks for the five. The guy that missed that free throw for chicken was scared of boba yoga. Hashtag John Wick 3 has also been working out up to swim a mile a couple times a week. That's exhausting. That is exhausting. Swimming is exhausting in general, and you can't tell when you're dehydrated is the other part of it, which I just I, – I can't do it. I'm not a good swimmer to start, but mm-hmm. – It's a great workout, though. Oh, it looks like it. It's a great workout. I get in the pool. I just well, sit there. My knees used to hurt a lot, like when I played rugby, because you get rat, like you get gator tackled and like spun around a lot. Yeah. And so, like instead of running in the offseason, I would try to swim as much as I could. Felt like I was in good shape, but also didn't really equate to rugby shape. Now that I'm really thinking back on it, uh, Gorky, thanks for the two. Remember Gorky, Jonte Porter, Chris, not Joey Porter. My bad. I I fucked it up. I didn't mean to call him Joey. If I did, that is my bad. Not Joey's basketball failures. Jonte Porter. Um, after your review, Zach, your bourbon and ball review. What are your thoughts on? We'll start with the quarterbacks and then the overall team. Um, I said it at the end of the bourbon and ball. I don't know how anyone came out of that spring game. And thought anything. Thought anyone had the edge. Thought anyone played better. Like, don't get me wrong. Lincoln had some dumbass throws, but he also had some throws where I was like, oh, shit, that's pretty good. Like, I saw that there's a lot, there's potential there. And we didn't know that. We heard that recruiting rankings, like his, his attributes. But we never saw him play quarterback and said, damn, there might be something there. Mm-hmm. I came away saying that, despite his miserable throws and interceptions and everything else. Julian saying... Similar. I saw a good pop out of his hand. He looked like a freshman. He is not even close to ready to play at a place like Ohio State, but he has a lot of skill. And as far as Will Howard and Devin Brown, disappointed, but also meh. I mean, they threw like nine passes. Yeah. Chris even said, how many did Devin, how many did Devin Brown throw last year? Uh, that will never run and throw any of Kyle McCord. Threw, oh, yeah, yeah. Kyle McCord. He threw like 34 passes last 34 year. 34 passes. Yeah. This year we got nine. So it's yeah. like such a small sample size. Now, Will Howard's red zone throws were somewhat atrocious. The receiver play was not great. They, they I don't know if they had an off day, but they didn't block well. They didn't really get open. They didn't really understand some of the zone coverages. I think now, obviously, for every negative, you can find a positive. Other than the defense was fucking outstanding. Mm, my bad. I had me confused. Kyle threw 22 last year. Um, the year, the year before, that's when they really opened it up, I guess. But regardless. Okay. Small sample size. Right. So to only throw nine passes for both quarterbacks. It felt like, damn, like, do you want to get anything out of this spring game at all? Like, yeah. any any chance to, like, and, kind of have them face adversity in front of the crowd is what and I And, like, let's see the offensive line pass pro a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of it was play action and RPOs. Like, there wasn't a lot of drop back pass. Like, very minimal. Yeah. And so, because of that, we didn't see a lot of errors in pass pro. I mean, we saw a couple sacks, obviously. Some of those were, were coverage sacks or the quarterback just holding the ball too long. I thought Josh Fryer looked more athletic. Now, still stiff as shit, but as far as, like, twitch and explosion, like a couple run plays, he's reaching defensive ends. I'm like, oh, shit, we got a little bit of explosion there, a little bit of burst. I thought um, I thought Simmons uh, Simmons was uh, really good. Yeah. Jimmy Crackcorn, I don't care, Simmons. He looks slimmer to me. Yeah, I thought he looked, he looked good. Um, I was very surprised that Carson Hinsman is going to be the right guard. Very. I didn't think he played exceptionally bad or good, but I just it's just a shocking move after watching him all year last year. I thought that by now Luke Montgomery would be ready to play this year. Like all the reports we heard were that he was a That's, guy that was pushing for a tackle spot too. and if not tackle guard. So for them to move Hinsman, I thought Hinsman was going to get banished to the Ryan Day doghouse forever. Yeah. After the now I'll tell you this: did. the other two, uh, Enoch and uh, who's the other Tegra, mm-hmm. really disappointing. I'm disappointed. Yeah. I mean, they did not look good. I mean, Enoch's been a matador his whole career, uh-huh. so he he hasn't he hasn't been very good. I was surprised that Tegra didn't get at least a little bit better. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts though. I thought the, the DNs looked good. Kenyatta Jackson's a, good, a really good player. Um, 
I, you didn't really see much of the linebacker play. Like mm-hmm. there was, I don't know. That, like what are we talking about? Sonny going in with the twos and threes was unique, weird. Unique, but like it's a game where no one hit or tackled. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like several times wideouts are blocking DBs and the DBs just standing there. And you're like, oh, that was better perimeter blocking. And then you watch the, the defense and you're like, oh, they're not even trying. Like, I don't know. It was a fucking miserable game, period. Calvin Simpson Hunt, he was always in coverage. Hey, very, very sticky. Very sticky. Very sticky. I don't know. I, and, and it's funny because, like, when I was watching, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's really sticky. But also, like, I'm not sure guys are really trying to break guys off in routes. I'm just, it, it was disappointing. And, and I'm not even going to say it was disappointing of the players or team. It just was very boring. And yeah. for a team that Urban Meyer said, where's the, where's the quote you put in here? Um, this might be the most talented team in the country, maybe in the last six or seven years. Boy, it didn't look like it. I mean, the defense kind of did. And I agree, it might be. But it, it was just a miserable game. I, I really, I was windy, I guess. They couldn't throw very well. Like, Ryan Day didn't really care about the fans. I don't know what the reason was, but it, it just wasn't entertaining. Can, can I put the tinfoil hat on real quick? Please do. Did you notice that, Jeremiah Smith played with every quarterback except for one. Yeah. And the one he didn't play with was Devin Brown. I there's no Isn't doubt. that weird, bro? That's weird. And it's weird that Devin mostly had fucking like uh Sherm, Sherm and fucking uh, Dave, Dave Adolf. Like it took was, those boys out to go score though. Yeah, he did. It was just it was very weird. That's that's what I'll say. It was strange. You're saying like it's just weird like not having him with JJ and then like the Fox broadcast on their highlights, cutting his the only touchdown of the day out. I don't know, bro. Um, and it's funny that Chris the, is deep in the Devin Brown bag. Uh, he it's, is. It's it's just weird. It's just, it's, just, it's just weird. It's probably a nothing burger. Probably an intern forgot to put something out there. <laughs> Maybe JJ hates Devin Brown and decided not to go out there. Um, but on the on the go ball to JJ that got underthrown by Will Howard, that was just the we're gonna throw it to. To oh, JJ. Yeah. There was like no oh, route yeah. there or anything. No, no route. Um, if JJ would have had the spring game that Garrett Wilson had for his first spring game, the whole internet would have been broken. Like, oh, for were, sure. Like Garrett was going fucking stupid in this spring game, dog. Like absurd. Like had had the one catch. I think was that from Matthew Baldwin in the corner of the end zone, which was a crazy moss. I thought we were going to see that kind of spring game from Jeremiah, and they tried to get him some moments, but oh yeah, that's the, bow. Bro, just okay. talk to me, Zach, bro. That shit was crazy, like, bro. Like, Garrett, Garrett is going crazy. So, of course, I Google it, and it comes up with a freaking uh, Twitter highlight of him Mawson, who was 12 that year. I don't know, but that shit was crazy as fuck. Like, that was – and, like, he's 5'11". Yeah, no, but he's – 5'11 with a 40-inch vert. Yeah, dude. I told you. I watched him play basketball. That motherfucker comes off the floor, and you're like, God damn, he's still up there. Yeah, like, dog. Like, is he going to come down eventually? Like, bro, you know it's a crazy moss when you catch it like this in the air and then pull your hands apart and still have the ball in the hands oh, yeah. and get both feet in bounds or you're still yep. holding it, bro. Like, that's <laughs> like, like there's like three different levels of mossing. Like, if you just moss somebody and you bring it down here, that's cool. That's nice. Here and then pull back is super disrespectful. But here and then separate while you're still in the air and then yeah. get both feet in is like, you're my son. <laughs> you're my child. Like, we're going to go home. I want you to cut and, the grass and do the fucking dishes. And you were adopted. Yeah, and, and you were adopted for real. Like, I'm your <laughs> step pops. Like, don't talk back to like, like, I am plowing your mama. Like, at, yeah, like, I'm I'm hit. Like, I'm talking about my toes are on her earlobe. Like, I'm going crazy. Like, like she be, be eating my ass. Okay, that's wild. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, I think that's like the one. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, bro, we were we were date we were doing it and then it's like okay wow now we're now we're asking I was ears. trying to see I was trying to see what was too far. Yeah, no, I got you. I mean I did, you know, ears on the, you know, feet on the earlobe, got it, got it. But um <laughs> anyway, let's hit, let's hit this last super chat to get out of here. Chris, you keep up with rugby. Zach, you ever do routes for fun? You know what? I told my son we're gonna run routes this weekend. Okay. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna lace them up, run some routes. I do not keep up with rugby, and I'm interested to see if that kid that signed with Kansas City is going to end up uh, making the roster. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, that's a cool be, story. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Uh, but, Zach, I, let's get out of here, bro. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Nice little hump day. Go get your freak on. Make sure you stretch and hydrate. Don't want to pull a muscle because we got to hit the gym tomorrow. <laughs> we appreciate you, Menace Army. Menace.